Subtracting rational expressions is a little bit harder than multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Remember, we just got done with multiplication and division, and you had to factor everything first and remove the common factors. Except for with division, you had to invert the second fraction and multiply. When you add and subtract fractions, you have to have common denominators in order to do that. So first, we're going to look at a few examples where common denominators already exist and look at situations that will, that will occur, such as having to simplify after we've finished the problem. The first problem I'd like to look at is 3 over 2y plus 5 over 2y. Again, these two fractions have common denominators, and when that's the case, you just go ahead and add the numerators. So 3 plus 5 gives us 8 over 2y. If I can, in this process, when I'm all done, if I can simplify this, and remember this is 2 times y, the y isn't connected to the, I'm sorry, the 2 isn't connected to the y, you can't you can simplify this 8 over 2. You don't have to think that just because this doesn't have a y term, you can't simplify it. 2 goes in here once, and 2 goes in here 4 times. And you have, after you've reduced this expression, 4 over y. Again, these two rational expressions have common denominators already, so I can go ahead, in this case, and subtract them, because they have that. Please remember that whenever you subtract, you have to add the opposite. So what I like to do is I like to say to myself, I'm going to add the opposite of this positive 5, which would be a negative 5, and the opposite of this minus 3x, which would be a positive 3x. And I'm back to the situation I just had a minute ago, which was adding two fractions. And so what I need to do is I need to combine like terms in the numerators. The denominators stay the same because I have their common denominator. So this 1x and this 3x adds to be 4x. And this positive 1 and minus 5 adds to be a minus 4. Over the common denominator of x squared minus 2x minus 1. I could say that I'm done. But I'm not in this particular case. If I can reduce this fraction, so I'm back to the very start of your, your work in this chapter. If I can factor these now at this point so that I can reduce them, I should. And I see that there's a common factor of 4 in the numerator. And so I'll have an x minus 1 here. And downstairs here, I see a trinomial that will probably factor into the product of two binomials with an x in the front of each. And because I have a minus 1, ooh, I'm sorry, good thing I, I copied that wrong. That's a plus 1 from up above. Um, because of this plus 1, I'm going to need two minus signs here because they have to add to be a negative 2. And I'll have to put 1s as the terms at the end of those binomials. Again, a minus 1 times a minus 1 is a positive 1. And a minus 1 plus a minus 1 is a minus 2. As a result, I can reduce or take out a common factor here, top and bottom, of x minus 1. And so my solution is in the numerator 4 and in the denominator x minus 1. When I add and subtract fractions, not only do I have to combine the terms once I get common denominators, but I have to remember to simplify afterwards. Um, introductory algebra students are going to be taking this test um, in the testing center. It'll be proctored. As a matter of fact, I think both um, intermediate is going to as well. Um, I will look for your work and I will look for simplifying, but the good news here is that you won't lose full um, points or the whole problem by not reducing right here. Getting to this step is going to be a good majority or 75% of the value of the problem. Getting this will be the, the next 25%. Sometimes two fractions that need to be added or subtracted almost have the same common denominator, but they might be opposite in sign. And the, the solution to this problem is to multiply, I prefer to multiply this fraction, by a negative 1 over a negative 1. I'm doing that, and I can do that, because when I multiply by the same thing top and bottom, I'm not affecting the value of this expression. It's an equivalent expression. But by doing that, this negative a times a minus 1 is going to give me a positive a in the denominator of this fraction, and 5 times a negative 1 is a minus 5. Now, I can add these two fractions because they have the exact same denominator, and I will add their numerators. That numer the numerators add to be a negative 3 over positive a, and I'm done. Again, please recognize that this expression could be written with a sign out in front of the division bar. It even could be written with the sign in front of A. So every one of these ways is an expression for the same thing. Okay, one last problem where the denominators are almost exactly alike. This denominator of x minus 2 
and this denominator of 2 minus x are not alike, but they are opposites. This x is positive, and this has a minus sign in front. This minus 2 is opposite to this positive 2. So really, again, all I need to do is I need to take one or the other, and I prefer to do the one that doesn't have the variable in front, and multiply this fraction top and bottom by a negative 1. And in doing that, let's look at the denominator first. A negative 1 times 2 is going to give me a minus 2. I'm going to put that at the end. A negative 1 times a minus x is going to give me a positive x. That, using that factor times this binomial has made this denominator now look like the one over here. I've got to re, uh, continue to do that up above. A negative 1 times 3x is a minus 3x, and a negative 1 times a minus 3 is a positive 3. Now I'm just going to copy the first fraction. I'm now ready, because these denominators do match, to add these two fractions, and so I'm going to combine my like terms in the numerator. So this 4x plus this negative 3x adds to be 1x. I don't tend to put the 1 there. I'll bring the 3 along. The common denominator of x minus 2, and I'm done. Again, please don't try to reduce those x's. They're not factors, they are terms. Now we're going to go on in the next um, few clips to look at adding and subtracting rational expressions that did not have common denominators. And we're first going to look at how we find those common denominators.